It's burger night in the Davison house, and today I'm working on home ground burgers with all the fixings, lettuce, pickles, tomatoes, plus my all-time favorite burger condiment, homemade pickled onions. Pickled red onions are a terrific condiment to have in the fridge, and they are especially good on homemade burgers. And they're easy to make. Start by taking a cup of red wine vinegar. We're gonna put it in a saucepan with a third of a cup of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're gonna put this on the stove top. Now I'm just gonna bring this vinegar mixture to a boil and I'm stirring it to make sure all that sugar is dissolved. All right, while that's cooking, let's chop the onions. All right, here I have a nice big red onion. Now you could do this with yellow onions or even a sweet onion like a Vidalia. Now we're gonna slice the onions very thinly and I'm very particular about how I slice onions. So I sliced off the root and the stem end. I cut the onion in half. Now is when you can peel off that papery skin and that first layer, which is often bruised and a little slimy. So there's two ways to slice an onion. One is against the grain. You know, the grain runs from the tip to the root. When you do that, you get the rainbows, but I think those look a little wormy and they soften too quickly. So I like cutting with the grain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna angle my knife as I go across the onion. For example, so about halfway through, I tip it on the other side, all the way to the middle. Here I have a jar that I'm gonna store the pickled onions in, and it's filled with hot water, and that's just to temper the glass so it won't crack when I add the boiling vinegar. So I'm gonna dump this out. Into the jar, the onions go. So that vinegar is at a boil, I'm gonna grab it from the stove. Now we just pour that hot vinegar right over the onions. <laughs> and that's it, we're just gonna let this cool at room temperature for about an hour, and you can keep it in the fridge for up to a week. We take burgers pretty seriously in this house, largely because I grew up eating a ton of homemade hamburgers. My homemade, I mean home ground meat. That's right, we use my Oma's meat grinder because she never bought ground meat either. She would pick out her piece of meat, grind it herself, so you knew it was fresh and you knew what was in it. And today I'm gonna show you my custom blend for hamburgers, and you wanna get three different cuts of meat for these burgers. This is skirt steak, it's a pound of skirt steak, which I love for its loose texture. Here we have some sirloin tips, which have a good meaty flavor, and last but not least, some short ribs, because they have that unctuous fattiness that is really good in a burger. So it's one pound of skirt steak, eight ounces of sirloin steak tips, and eight ounces of short rib. All right, so to get started, the first thing you wanna do is trim off any big nubs of fat. Of course, you wanna leave some of the fat on there because that makes the burger taste good. So if you see any big nubs, they're not gonna grind up in the food processor, so you wanna cut them off. This actually looks pretty good. Now, I'm gonna cut these into pretty small pieces, about half inch cubes. That will just allow the food processor, which is what we're gonna to use to grind the meat, to really get in there and grind it to a nice, even consistency. All right, so there's the short ribs. Now for the sirloin steak tips. Now usually sirloin steak tips aren't cut like this. I got duped at the store and this is for a stir fry, but it actually doesn't matter because we're gonna grind it up anyway. You just wanna cut these into pieces again that will, about half an inch big, will grind nicely in the food processor. Sneaky meat, guys. The one nice thing about buying it this way, it's mostly well trimmed already. Sirloin steak tips is obviously from the sirloin. Steak tips in general is a name that can mean a lot of different things to different butchers. But if you really wanna get the accurate cut of meat, it's called flat meat. And nowadays I'm seeing flat meat as an actual term used in the butcher case. So that's something good to look out for. Last but not least, the skirt steak. If you can't find skirt steak, usually the restaurants scoop it all up because it's such a delicious cut. You can substitute flank steak. Now this skirt steak has a nice big fat cap on it, which is beautiful, but I don't want all of that into the burger. So I'm just gonna trim off any big knobs of fat. That looks pretty good. Got my dog bowl for scraps. The dog's not actually gonna eat these scraps. It's just handy to have a place to put all those trims so your cutting board stays clean. That is a big knob of fat. 
Sometimes you can just pull the fat out with your fingers. That way you just don't trim away as much valuable meat. That looks pretty good. Now, like everything else, I'm just gonna cut it into half inch cubes. Oh, this meat is beautifully marbled. You can see those striations of fat throughout the meat. And that's what gives skirt steak its wonderful tender texture and big beefy flavor. Back onto the tray it goes. Now you notice I have this tray lined with paper towels. That's because it's just nice to pat it dry before it goes into the freezer. Now we're gonna mix it up just ahead of grinding. That way all the pieces are nicely mixed by the time it's ground. And this is going into the freezer, as I mentioned, to firm up only for about 40 minutes. You want the outside to be good and firm, but you don't want it frozen through. All right, into the freezer this goes. Uncovered. All right, here is the meat from the freezer and it is the perfect texture. Nice and firm on the outside, but not frozen through. That's just gonna help it grind more evenly in the food processor. Now, if you have a meat grinder, by all means use it. But if you don't, a food processor does a wonderful job. So what we're gonna do is chop this in four batches. So take about a quarter of the meat, sprinkle it into the food processor. Now we're gonna pulse it to the pieces are nice and finely ground and measure about a 16th. It's about 20 pulses. I'm just gonna dump it onto a nice clean sheet pan. Now this is where we're gonna shape the burgers. Let's do the rest of the meat. Now the meat is all ground and spread out on this tray, break it apart a little bit and look for any big chunks of fat or gristle that didn't grind down. And now you can get rid of it before shaping the burgers. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now to shape the burgers, I'm gonna handle the meat very gently. If you notice, I was dumping the meat rather than grabbing it with my hands. Having a loose patty is kind of nice and the only way to get that is by not overworking the meat. So, we're gonna divide this meat into four nice big burgers. In case you were wondering, that was two pounds of meat, four burgers, that's a half pound patty. Nice and big. All right, now I'm just gonna shape them into patties. I want the patties to be about three quarters of an inch thick. So once you got it in a burger shape, what I like to do is pick it up, use my thumb to help shape the burger and help compact it ever so slightly, just so that it hangs together. But you can see on the bottom, you can see that loose meat texture. I don't want to destroy that. That is how you get a nice tender burger. All right, so there's nice four nice big burgers. One last trick is to add a divot to the middle. Have you ever cooked a burger and it puffs up on the grill and almost looks like a softball? Yep, well the way around that is just to depress the center ever so slightly so that it's thinner than the edges. Then when it cooks up, it's nice and level. All right, so that's it for the burger prep. Now I'm gonna cover these with plastic wrap and put them in the refrigerator until they're ready to cook. I'm gonna turn the oven down to 300 degrees because I'm gonna start the burgers on the stove but finish them in the oven with the cheese. That's how you get nice melted cheese and a perfectly cooked medium rare burger, which is key for me. Before we cook them, let's season them up with some salt and pepper. If you notice, I didn't season them earlier when I was grinding the meat or even when I was shaping the burgers. That's because the salt can actually have a negative effect on the texture of the burger. So want nice tender burgers, season them right before you cook. All right, be sure to season both sides. Now we're ready to cook. So over here, I have a skillet. It is smoking. That's exactly what you want. There's a teaspoon of veg oil in this skillet. Nice big skillet, 12 inches, high heat. You want to gently add the burgers to the pan. You want to cook them for about two to four minutes on this first side till they're nice and brown. All right, those burgers have been frying for about three minutes on this first side. Now it's time to flip them over. The two spatula method, one to flip and one to catch. Oh, oh that browning is everything. You want to handle these pretty carefully because like I said, they're hand-packed. 
which means they're a little on the delicate side, but that's gonna make a great tasting burger. So you just gotta be a little gentle when you cook them. All right, so those burgers have been cooking on that second side for about three minutes. Now, this is the trick to a perfectly medium rare burger. You finish them in the oven. So we're gonna take them out of the pan, put them on a rimmed baking sheet. All right, there's the last burger. Oh, those are lookers. All right, now's when you gotta add the cheese if you want cheese. Two of us in the house like cheese, one person doesn't. And one dog probably shouldn't have it, but he might get a little anyway. All right, so into the oven this goes, 300 degrees. It can take anywhere from three to eight minutes, depending on how well done you like your burgers. This is a medium rare house, so we're looking for 120 to 125 for an internal temperature. Into the oven they go. I know, Ziggy, you smell burgers? <laughs> All right. Yes, I made one for you, Buffy. All right. So the burgers are, they look done, but the only way to tell if they're medium rare or not is to take their temperature. Medium rare is between 120 and 125. All right, those burgers are perfect medium rare. We have to let them rest for five minutes before you get to eating. Those burgers have rested and now it's time to eat. All right, so everyone in this house has their own way they like burgers, including the dog. <laughs> All right, so first up, my daughter, who has no cheese. There's a cheeseburger for me, cheeseburger for Ian, cheeseburger for a very lucky puppy. Time to dress the burgers. All right, first, my daughter with no cheese. She likes one thing on her burgers, and that is a ton of pickles. I mean, like more pickles than you think you should have in a burger. That's my daughter. Next up, Mr. Ian. He likes lettuce, no tomato, double onion. So that's raw onions and those pickled onions I made. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget the pickles. There we go. For me, largely the same lettuce. I do love tomato. Double onions. Oh yeah. Yes to pickles. Ziggy, <laughs> he just gets a burger on a bun. All right, and that's the Zigsters. Now the sauce, you can see, Ian and I love the sauce, my daughter not so much. Gotta get it like in the sauce though, it's a house thing, right? All right, so, I use a lot of sauce. Oh yeah. Oh, that is a burger. Okay, now, I know this is a little hokey, but I totally love using old school plastic trays with this checkerboard paper. All right, here's Marta's, here's Ian's, here's mine. Ziggy will get his laters. All right, so it's burger time. What goes better with burger than ice cold soda? And this is the old school Coca-Cola, the one in the glass bottle made with real sugar. Special treat on burger night, you get to have a old fashioned Coke. <laughs> Let's just focus on my burger for now. Let's cut it open. It's a big burger, easier to eat if you cut it. Oh, look at that, perfect medium rare. Just like I like it. <laughs> it's a juicy burger. Mmm, <laughs> that's a burger. The meat tastes good, it's tender, it's perfectly medium rare. It has all the toppings I like, including double onions. It's kind of an all-American dinner right here. See you next time. Thanks for watching. What'd you think? Leave a comment below and let me know what you're excited to cook this week. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. You can get today's recipes and more for free at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash julia at home.